Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to, I come to thee. Minister Wood, God bless you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Praise the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. If we could bow. Father God, is in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. We come before you, Father, just praising your holy and righteous Thank name, you, God, Lord. and thanking you for another day, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, God, creating us, God. Thank yes. you for sustaining us, Lord. Yes. Thank you for providing for us, Father God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for everything, everything, Father God. God, as I come before your congregation, Father God, you, Lord, give me the words that you would have me to give, give the them, Jesus. Father God. Whatever you've given inside of me, Father God, let me give your congregation, your people, God, the people that you love, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 My scripture tonight is coming from St. John, the 8th chapter, the 4th and the 5th verse. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? What sayest thou? They were talking to Jesus. My title tonight, Forgiveness, a Matter of Spiritual Life and Death. All right. The Pharisees were looking for a way to trap Jesus in whatever he said this woman's punishment should be. They were trying any way to arrest him, even by breaking their own laws of just bringing the woman without the man who was involved with the woman also. Right. This was part of the law. So they were already breaking the law. Right. The Pharisees did not spiritually <laughs> understand the divine right. nature of Jesus. Right. They felt he spoke blasphemy mm -hmm. about being sent from God. The Pharisees and scribes' pride also played a big part in them wanting to get rid of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They felt their popularity poll was dropping. Mm -hmm. People were now believing in the word of God, not all the made-up rules of the Pharisees. The not that the Pharisees didn't believe. They just added in lots of other man-made laws mm -hmm. that they could not even uphold themselves. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees chose not to make themselves aware of the fact that the main purpose, yeah. the main purpose that Jesus came was to forgive sins. Right. Stoning was the punishment for adultery at that time because they said she was caught in the act. Lord have, <laughs> have you ever been caught in the act? Mm. If we step back, and spiritually look at things, we've all been caught That's in the right. act. That's right. We've yeah. all, all of us, every last one have been caught in the act. God sees everything we do, Amen. even right. the intent of our hearts. That's right. Our act may not have been adultery, <laughs> or it could have been. Ours could have been stealing, and that includes anything that doesn't belong to you. Even the ink pens on the jaw, cursing, disobeying God, addiction to drugs, drinking too much, gluttony, homosexuality, the wrong thoughts. Those are just to name a few of the acts. God knows that sometimes we're complying with worldly living. That's why God wants us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Jesus wanted the Pharisees and scribes to be aware of their own sins. That's right. 
So he told them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own consciousness, left out one by one, yes. beginning from the eldest to the youngest. And you know, and they said in the word, not in the commentary of the word, that maturity has something to do with the wisdom. So when you know better, you do better. That's right. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. Everybody that was standing around her was ready to stone her. So when Jesus looked around and saw that there was no one left to accuse the woman, he asked her, where are your condemners? She basically said, there's no one left to condemn me. Jesus told her that he didn't condemn her either. <coughs> he forgave her. That's right. As I said early, forgiveness is a matter of spiritual life and death. Right. And she was to go and sin no more. See, God didn't overlook her sin. He simply forgave her. That's right. If we could only forgive that easy. Mm. Some of us are so deeply rooted in our wounds from childhood uh -huh. and young adult that we've been hurting for years and want others to hurt because we hurt. That's right. I know you heard misery love company. Mm -hmm. So that's why folks want each other to hurt. We don't want nobody to be happy. We want folks to hurt. Oh, then we take it out on others without realizing it sometimes. So we find it hard to forgive. We can always find fault in others. Matthew 7 and 5 says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote in thy brother's eye. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, why is it so easy to see somebody else's faults? Huh? Why can we see other folks' faults, but yet when we stand in the mirror, we cannot see our own faults? We, we need to question ourselves sometimes. When we refuse to forgive, we're in disobedience to God's word. We give Satan legal right to have a stronghold in our lives because we're not in obedience to God's word. Well, well. When we don't forgive others, mm -hmm. it hinders the flow of love towards others. Our prayers are hindered. We lose our joy. Yeah. Our attitudes are poison. And we spew that poison onto everyone we meet. There are many believers <laughs> who are unwilling to make the right choice. They live according to their feelings. Mm -hmm. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> feelings ain't got nothing to do with it. And we refuse to move beyond that to God's word. Mm -hmm. And God's word says, if we can't forgive others, say it, say it. God won't forgive us. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. We nurse those negative emotions over and over in our minds until anger begins to take root in us. Then anger becomes unforgiveness. God didn't say we couldn't get angry. Ephesians 4 and 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Right. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Meaning, get rid of that anger before it wants to spend the night at your house, which may begin a series of sleepless nights filled with worry and negative thoughts. It also helps to elevate the blood pressure, leading to hypertension. From there, we begin to speak about ulcers. And this is only the beginning of the medical symptoms. I told you, forgiveness is a matter of spiritual life and death. We, talking about us now, we, the church folks, are the modern day Pharisees. We do everything right and we say the correct things. At least we think we do. When you don't understand the schemes of the devil, he can trick you into anything. Because we want to blend in with what the world is doing. Uh -huh. 
So we fail to remind ourselves of God's will, which is Ephesians 4 and 32 says, be kind to, uh, to one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. Don't take it personal. Look beyond that person you're dealing with and look at the demonic spirit that might be dealing with that person. See, all we can see is what we see right in front of us. You, you, you. That's all I can see. I don't see how Satan works behind the scene because it's unseen. I can't see it unless I got my spiritual eyeglasses on. And I got them on. I got them on tonight. I don't always have them on. So sometimes I'm tricked by the schemes of the devil. All right. Because we, are, we as believers are not to be conformed to this world, God has given us the supernatural ability through him to forgive because forgiving is not a natural thing to do. It's a supernatural. The natural thing to do is be vengeful and get that person back when they offend you or curse them out. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or maybe even hold a grudge for 40 years. The Pharisees did not have the love, forgiveness, and compassion in their hearts that God did. Mm -hmm. That's why they found it hard to forgive the woman. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry. The woman, I'm sorry, that was caught in the act until God pointed out their sins. Remember what God said? He that is without sin cast the first stone. Don't let God have to point your sins out in a crowd. You wouldn't like it. I know I wouldn't. So do the supernatural thing by asking God to help you forgive starting today. God does not want pretentious forgiving from your mouth because he knows the intent of your heart. He wants a genuine forgiveness from your heart. You can pretend with people, but you can't pretend with God. Forgiveness is not an option. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> it's a command. God, it's in God's word. Evelyn didn't write it. It's in God's word. So you don't have an option of not wanting to forgive when people say, well, you don't know how they hurt my feelings. Like I said, it's not about your feelings. It's about God's word. Amen. And, you know, if you can handle God not forgiving you because you're not forgiving somebody else, then you go ahead. Mm -hmm. If you can handle that. I can't handle it. Forgiveness is not an option, like I said. A spirit of forgiveness and an attitude of love and compassion towards those who may have wronged us is the very essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love thy neighbor. Yeah. I know y'all heard of that. Love thy neighbor, Leviticus 9, 16 through 18. It doesn't matter what your neighbor did. Love thy neighbor. First of all, love the Lord thy God, first of all, with all that heart, mind, and soul. Then love thy neighbor as thyself. Whenever you ask God to forgive you, turn around and remind yourself, ask yourself, is there anyone who I have not forgiven? Try that sometimes. When you ask him, because I know I have to ask God daily, forgive me of my sins, the ones that I know I committed and the ones I didn't know I committed. Forgive me. But then when I turn around and ask myself, have I not forgiven someone that I should forgive? And sometimes, yeah, there's a yeah. It could have been my husband. You know, I remember going to church one, um, one, one evening for evangelism class and, um, as usual, I'm, I'm a big person about flowers. I always love flowers, and for some reason, my husband does not remember to give them to me. So I was mad with him. I'm being honest. I was mad with him. So as I got to church, I told God, I said, God, please forgive me of my sins. And God almost slapped me in my face. He said, when you forgive Calvin, I'll forgive you. So that was a slap in the face. So I know what I had to do. God said, if you can't forgive others, I can't forgive you. And I, don't, and, 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 and I know this is something we should all know, that we've been saying this model prayer for years. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debt towards. Mm -hmm. 
But if you don't forgive your debtor but 10%, that's just how much you're asking God to forgive you. Forgive me as I forgive my debtor. So if I choose not to forgive my debtor, that means what? God does not have to forgive me because I'm asking him to do to me what I've done to my debtor. But we've been saying that model prayer for years and not even thinking about it. It's just something that's ingrained in your mind so it comes out of your mouth. But you got to think about what you're saying. <clears throat> I was thinking the other day, well, no, just yesterday, basically, uh, when Reverend Dudley called me, I was thinking about how when we don't forgive, then we become separated from God. We don't recognize that. I said, I was thinking about when a leaf falls off a tree and then, you know, falls on the ground, it starts to wither, it turns brown, and then it's blown away by the wind. See, and that, that's what happened to us when we are spiritually disconnected from God. We dry up just like that leaf because we have fallen away from that spiritualness that God was, that what he was feeding us. We've fallen away from it just like that leaf. And what happens is we start having all kind of debt problems. We start our relationships just get all tangled up. We, we our, our prayers are not being heard by God. All kind of things happen when you're not forgiving people and you think you're getting away with something. You know, I, I recognize this about a year or two ago on the job, as, as, as Mickey would say, let me give a small testimony. On my job, there was a lady she had to take over because my supervisor had a heart attack, so he was out four months. So she had to take over. And she did not do what my supervisor was doing, she, but she was her. And my supervisor was him. But I had, in my mind, there was disagreements with what she was doing. She wasn't doing the wrong things. She just didn't do it like my supervisor. So I built up some wall against her. So after a while, you know, Reverend Dix started teaching about forgiveness. And I'm in my mind, you know, I ain't going to look like the lesser person. I ain't going to look like the weaker person right. forgiving her. That's what I'm telling myself. But as he would teach us on this, my heart, God pricked my heart. I said, oh, goodness, okay. So I went back to work. I told a lady, well, I'm sorry, because sometimes when you think about things, you're part of the problem, too. We want to blame everything on somebody else. You know, we're letting them take all the blame. But if you look back on the problem, the problem, it was part of your problem. Okay, but let me tell you what happened. Just to show you, I had not really forgiven her. We would have a meeting each week. I'm telling you the truth. So I would plot, because I still had unforgiveness in me, I would plot where I would sit and where she would sit because I didn't want her near me. I still had unforgiveness in my heart, and I didn't recognize it, but I recognized it when she would walk in the door, I would cringe. I said, that woman still need to tell me she's sorry. Now, see, I hadn't forgiven her, because if I had forgiven her, none of that would still be in me. I'm still locked down in prison in my mind, being mad and angry, thinking all kind of things about this woman. She need to say she's sorry, she need to do this, she need to do that. So I went back to church another night. Reverend Dick still teaching about unforgiveness. He stayed on about eight months. Because for some of us, it take that long. For some of us, it take eight years. For some of it to penetrate into people's hearts, okay? Amen. So that next night, they was doing Bible study. Because he taught it for the sermon on Sunday, and he taught it for Bible study. So that night, God pricked my heart again. And I said, you know what? I forgive her. I I'm serious. I forgive her. Reverend Dix also told us, when you forgive a person, you need to go and let them know. Okay? Let me tell you something. I didn't want to do that. I still felt like I would have been the weaker person if I went again to her and tell her that. But I was going home that night. I'm trying to box with God mentally. I'm trying to box with God. Coming home from Bible study. So I ran through the red light. So here's the police right there, right behind me. I said, oh, Lord, okay, see what I get for trying to box with you, God? I can't do that. So the next day, they taught me a lesson. The next day, I went on back to work, and I, I saw the woman. I said, uh, Miss So-and-so, can I speak to you? She said, yeah. I said, I want to tell you I'm sorry. She said, Miss Woods, you already did. I said, let me tell you something. 
I told you from my mouth. Now I'm telling you from my heart that I was sorry. And from that time on, it felt like I was let out of CCI, that I was released out of prison. I'm serious. That's how bad unforgiveness will have you on lockdown mentally. So I just thank God for God teaching me that lesson where I could take it out because people need it. People may forgive today and they all pissed off and unforgiving tomorrow, okay? So that's why, you know, I know Reverend Dudley's heard me speak several times on forgiveness, but until God changed my sermon, then I'll still be doing it because people still need to hear it. Because people still harboring this anger in their heart that you ain't going to get over on me. But see, it's not about them getting over on you. The fact is, once you forgive, you've done what God has asked you to do. You're taking that person off your hook, and you're putting them on God's hook. It ain't about the bigger man or little man. It's listening to God's word. I've done what God asked me to do. So that person is off my hook. I'm free. Hallelujah. And that person is on God's hook. They got to deal with God now. So I can walk around smiling, even family members. You know, you got to forgive. Sometimes you get angry because you say, Lord, I done done so much for my sister. I done done so much for my brother. And look how they treat me. But it doesn't matter. I ain't got to walk around saying, oh, they hurt my feelings. It's not about your feelings. It's about the word of God and his will, what he would have you to do. So that's why I'm now, I'm so big on that. I'm big on forgiveness because I know it can change your life. It can, it can keep husband and wives together. It can keep family members from fighting each other and not wanting to see each other on Sundays or any other day. So we all just have to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, I thought about how God, he, Jesus died on that cross. He sacrificed himself just to forgive us of our sins. He was dragged through several courts. And he was falsely accused. Now he could have been mad and, and been unforgiving. He was nailed to that old rugged cross. He bled and he died just to forgive us of our sins. And we think so little of that that we can harbor hate and anger against our fellow man, our fellow sisters and brothers, our husbands and wives. So when you go home tonight, think about that. Even if it's stuff that happened 20 years ago that you have not forgiven a person about, think about it. Because you don't recognize God's holding some of them blessings up in heaven. Because you haven't done what he's asked you to do. You've been disobedient. You're still holding unforgiveness. So just think about that. Think about that. God died just for us to forgive us of our sins. We would never be tortured like he was tortured. Beaten unrecognizably. Just so he could forgive us of our sin. Thank you for sitting tonight. Thank you for hearing the word. I just praise God that forgiveness will resonate in you and it will change you to somehow understand that you are not the weaker person for forgiving. You are the bigger person for forgiving. It doesn't matter if that person never forgives you. It doesn't matter You're only responsible for yourself. I'm not responsible for Teresa. I'm not responsible for Gail. I'm not responsible for Miss Dix. I'm not responsible for them. But if they did something against me, it's my responsibility to forgive. It's not about Evelyn's little feelings or anybody's little feelings. No, be it man or woman, it's about God's word. If we bow, Father God, I thank you for your word.